the the way I like to think about double tonguing is um, the way that it's helped me, and, and people have disagreed with me about this, but uh, notably Betty Camis, but she disagreed with me about <laughs> that. Uh, so, um, so, so in my formulation, the uh, the double tongue, the, the difficulty with the double tongue, of course, right, is the cut. So the closer I can get the k to the t, the better. So actually physically closer. So I'm trying to put the k. It's like as close to the to the tip of my tongue as I possibly can. If we're trying to go k, we're 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 way back here, right? We're, that's laborious. It's like trying to move a truck, right? Up here, it's 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 got a little more um, ease to it, right? So so come so getting the ta and the ka to have the the um, that that same kind of lightness, and I would say lightness is 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 the key, right? That we we, we don't need. I mean, with tonguing also, just with regular tonguing, like you don't need a a clamp, right? We need a we need a touch, um, and so that's the same thing that we can think about with the ka, and. Um, if I can get my ta, like if I'm practicing and I can get my ta, my individual ta's to sound like my individual ka's, right? So if I'm, I got the elbow and I'm just going ka, 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 ta, ta, ka, ka. Can I get those, how equalized can I get them individually? Then when I combine them, it's, it's, a, it, it's better. Cool. Titus? Um, double tongue is something I spent a lot of time doing because my single tongue is a snail. And I remember when I was in a lesson with John Mack and John Mack said, if I were to shoot you next week and I told you, you need to double tongue or else I shoot you next week, would you learn to double tongue? I was like, yes, I learned to double tongue. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I don't know why he used that analogy, but it got me to, <laughs> it got me to practice. So the, for me, um, I double tongue, practically almost everything. I double tongue the Mozart concerto and people can't tell because I, I really have to depend on that because my single tongue isn't that fast. And I've worked in my single tongue for hours to tell another conversation. But one thing that I would want to drive home with double tongue is most people become more tense when they double tongue. So they get more like this when they double tongue. And usually when the double tongue is splitting, because I can double tongue, you know, uh, Prokofi of Symphony One, dun thicker dun thicker dun thicker dun, no cracking or in the low register. It's because I'm playing very, very open and I'm playing relaxed and also my tongue is focused. So most of the time when people double tongue, you check the pitch, literally, like you said, affecting the pitch, look at the tuner. When people double tongue, they're like, the, it's way in red over here because they're tight and they're, they're forcing the double tongue. That's why I tell people double tongue with the drone, like really the quality of the air and your articulation is only as good as the quality of air that you take in and you breathe out. So you're, that's the thing. People can get away with a fast single tongue with a bad quality of air because you're literally touching the reed. But when you're double tonguing, you can't get away with clean, very clear double tonguing with bad air. So it forces you to play down. It forces you to have a more focus air column and a relax and playing down to pitch because the oboe starts to go haywire, especially the ray oboes. They just go haywire once you get past a certain point. The tone starts to split, the low register is gone, the tone is not focused and it's shrill. So really, really think about how open you can be and how the quality of the air that you're double tonguing on. And I've played around with different syllables besides uh, taka, taka, taka. I play with dugu, 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 dugu. Different people do different types of things. Me personally, I like the taka, taka because it gives me the clarity that I need to the, to the front of the note. So I need that clarity to be there. So if you have a nice, very kind of uh, an air column that is very, very uh, down and open and, and relaxed, you can articulate on that wind. And that's the main thing that I have to stress about double tonguing is the quality of your air primarily and then put the articulation on there. Because if you're just focused, just on, I got to get this K right, I got to get this K right, I got to get, yes, you work on that muscle. You have to know what that feels like towards the front. But on top of that, quality of air first would clarify your double tongue. I, I love that also, um, both of you. Um, Double tonguing is a really great thing for me because it taught me one of those musical breakthroughs in my life um, was when I had, you know, we tell ourselves lies 
And when you can't play La Scala di Seta or La Mer or something, and you think, oh, I'm not going to be able to be a professional musician because I can't single tongue that. But it taught me early on that there are no roadblocks in music. There's always a detour, and you got to find out where that detour can go. And you study with teachers that can guide you in those directions. But so I agree with what my colleagues said. Uh, I just want to add to that that your read stability has to be there. The reads can't be too open and they can't be too closed. And um, some people, as uh, my colleagues mentioned, you know, can say too coo. Some people can say tiki as in tiki torch. And I have some students that are working on it now that starting with the K syllable first works better for them. So those are all things that are okay and are completely legal in music. So just um, once I started learning to double tongue, I would mark my syllables on top of my music if I was going to start with a K. Um, like with uh, Aaron Copeland's hoedown in the low register, I always start with the K because it's just cleaner for me personally. Um, you don't always have to mark your syllables, but it took me about 10 years of double tonguing before I could just kind of make it up as I went and didn't have to mark my syllables.